Hi, this is Franco with Wizardify and welcome to Excel Quick Tips. For this video, I'm going to explain how to use absolute and relative references in Excel so that you can speed up your work and avoid frustrating errors when working with large data sets. I'm going to cover the differences between each of them so you know when to use them, common issues you may run into with them, and using mixed references. As a starting point, let's start with our sample data set. What do we have for today? Our boss gave us a summary of sales for the day, containing the name of our sales representatives, how much they were able to sell today, and the rate for commissions. So what do we have to present? We have to find the dollar amount of commissions that we have to pay our agents, the ratio of their sales compared to the total sales, and the comparison of their rate compared to the average rate. So how are we going to do that? Now it's really simple. And let's start off with commissions. Now, when you're computing for the dollar amount of commissions to give to your agents, this is simply the sales amount multiplied by the commission rate. So one thing that we do have to go over when talking about referencing is the fact that you might already be doing it, even if you don't know that you're doing it. So Here's the thing, when we write down formulas in Excel, we don't start off the formula and manually type the figures that we see. So sales of 1,200 multiplied by 5%, right? We don't type that in manually. If you try to drag that across to different rows, well, you're not really gonna get a dynamic formula. You're always gonna get the answer to the formula that you wrote up here, right? And that's not what you want to do. Maybe you can do it for this data set because you only have five rows of data to worry about. But the thing is, if we're dealing with hundreds and thousands of rows of data, you're not really going to want to do that. It's not practical. So what do we usually do when we're working with Excel? Instead of typing down the numbers that we see, we click on the cells that we want to use in the formula. And that's all that we do, right? So for example, if we're talking about sales amount multiplied to commission rate, what we do is we simply click on cell C4 and cells D4. And that's enough for us to come up with our formula. This thing that we're doing of pointing to other cells when we're making our formulas, that's what we call referencing. And referencing can either be relative or absolute. Now, when we're talking about relative and absolute references, what we actually did is an example of relative referencing. And that's because when you do relative referencing, what happens is your references change with the position of the formula. Now, what do I mean by this? In simple terms, we told Excel to look at the two cells to the left of our cell where the formula is. So in this case, our formula is an E4. We're asking Excel to look at C4 and D4, right? Now, what happens is if I want to copy this formula down or across my table, I just have to click this green box, drag this down. And as you can see, I get the different figures. That's because it's doing the instructions that we talked about, right? We told Excel to look at the two cells to the left of our cell where the formula is. And because of that, if you look at the formula, originally we told it to look at C4 and D4. When you go down one row, we're actually referencing cells C5 and D5 now. So isn't that cool? That's the power of relative referencing. It allows us to create dynamic formulas that we can just copy paste across our data set. And that is a really cool thing to do, but you might not want to have relative references all the time. All right, what do I mean by that? Let's take, for example, our computation on the ratio of sales per sales agent. So let's look at Alice here. Alice was able to make us $1,200 and that's really neat. 
Now we have to compare this to the total sales. So we click on her sales amount and we want to divide this by total sales of 7,700 and we get 16%. What happens here? Maybe you want to take the same approach that you did when you computed for commissions and you want to click this formula, just drag it down, right? Easy as pie, but now we have a problem because we're getting a divide by zero error and there's a value error down here too. So now you might be wondering, oh no, maybe my formula is wrong, right? Maybe I didn't divide it by the right thing. Initially, you did divide it by the right thing. You're referencing cell C10 as our divisor, and that's where total sales is. So that's actually fine. The problem here is we're still using relative referencing, right? So when you look at the formula, we're looking at C4 here. That's fine because that's the amount that we want to divide by our total sales. And when we move down to the next formula, we see that we're dividing C5, right? C5 is correct. This is the amount that we want to divide, but our divisor moved down with the formula. So we moved down one step from F4 to F5. And so did our divisor from C10. We're now referencing C11. So you can see that right here. The question is, is that what we want to do? Of course not. So what's the answer to our problem here? Now we move on to absolute referencing or absolute references. What happens here is you want to make it so that when you copy the formula down, C10 doesn't move as a reference, right? And how do we do that? We have to anchor this using the dollar sign. What am I doing here? Just to remind you, a real quick theory lesson here. A cell is actually the intersection between a column and a row. All right. So a column and a row intersect and where those columns and rows intersect, those are the cells that we're dealing with, right? So we call this cell F4 because it's the intersection between column F and row four, right? So now when you're referencing a cell, you have to look at it from that point of view. So I have cell C10. So what do I want to keep constant? Right? So one thing that you can do is add a dollar sign before the 10. And what this does is it tells Excel, hey, I don't want you to change the row. Even if I drag the formula down, I want you to stay in row 10. Right? And that's the same logic if you put a dollar sign before the letter C. It's telling Excel, hey, I want you to stay in column C. Whether I move my formula to the left or to the right, I want you to stay at column C. That's basically what we're telling Excel. And if you see, I drag this formula down and now it works as intended. If we look at the formula, the numerator or the figure that we're dividing, now it's moving, right? It's still a re relative reference. So that's fine. And now our divisor is an absolute reference. That's something that's really cool that a lot of people miss. And, you know, I'm just really happy to show you that today. Now, one thing I also want to emphasize is that, again, a cell is an intersection of columns and rows, and you don't have to make both the column and the row absolute. You can stick to just making the row absolute, but the column relative, or you could do it the other way around too. That's fine. So I'm actually going to do that because if we look at the next set of computations that we have to make, it's really similar to what we did in ratio of sales, right? So if I want to compare my commission rates or our sales representative's commission rates to the average rate, I simply have to divide the rate of commission by the average rate. It looks just like what we did for ratio of sales. If it's the same logic, maybe I can just copy that formula, right? Here's the thing. If I copy that formula as it is right now, I'm not going to get the results I want because I'm dividing the commission rates in column D by the total sales in column C. And that's not what I want to do. 
how do we allow our formula to capture movement between columns, but how do we make it stick into the row where the average rate is, right? So just like I said a while ago, maybe you want to put an anchor in the row, but you want to keep the column dynamic. That's fine, right? You want to keep it relative. So we remove the dollar sign before the C, right? And we leave the dollar sign before the row. So what happens now is, if I copy this formula over, there we go. All right. So now we're dividing D4 by D10. So the column moved, but now will the row move? Let's check. So let me just click this, drag it down, and we got the results that we wanted. Now, we're still dividing by D10. So again, when you're dealing with absolute references, these don't change the position of the formula. Another quick tip that I do have to share with you guys is if you're too lazy to put the dollar signs in or you want to save some time, you don't need to manually put those in there. You just have to click on the cell that you want to reference and you press F4 on your keyboard. All right, so as you can see, I'm just pressing F4 and it's moving through different types of anchoring. So I want an absolutely static reference. That's what Excel gives me when I press F4 the first time. I press F4 again, and now only the row is static. The column is now dynamic. It can move between columns. If I press that again, it's the other way around. You stick with the same column, but now you can change the rows when you drag the formula over. And if I decide that finally, you know what? I do want to keep it mostly dynamic. Right? I press F4 again, and it brings me to a totally relative reference. So that's a cool thing you can do. And that's practically it on absolute and relative referencing. So guys, thanks again. This has been Franco from Muzdefy, and I hope this video helped you a lot. Check out our other videos on Excel Quick Tips.